Question six. Question six. A student was carrying out an investigation to alcohols, aldehydes and ketones. They were given three alcohols labelled as A, B, C. Their alcohols were all isomers with the formula C4H9OH. Draw a structural formula for the secondary alcohol with the formula C4H9OH. Okay, um, so secondary alcohol. Let's give four carbons in here. And I need an OH off a carbon which is attached to two carbons. Fill in the rest. And that's you. Butan 2 all if we're looking for a name, but it doesn't. It wants the structure. Don't name it. Okay, student followed set up the following experiment. We've got 10 centimetres cubed of acidified dichromate solution, 2 centimetres cubed of alcohol, a hot water bath, and then they looked for colour change. So A and C had a colour change, B had no change. Suggest why a water bath is an appropriate method of heating the reaction mixture. Basically, a water bath means that flammable uh, reactants can be heated carefully, you know, heated safely. That's it. Uh, colour change with alcohols A and C. So we have acidified dichromate. Um, you just need to know this. This is orange to green. Got to give both. Alcohol B is not oxidised. State the type of alcohol which cannot be oxidised by acidified dichromate solution. The type of alcohol here is tertiary. Okay, we have a second experiment with alcohol E, so that's the one that one of the ones oxidised. Um, hot copper two oxidi oxide is a oxidising agent. When alcohol A is oxidised, the product turns the pH paper red. Suggest a name for this product. Okay, right. So if it goes to an acid, what you need to know is, or what you should know, um, is that you've got primary because a primary can go to an aldehyde and then go to the carboxylic acid. You already know it's not tertiary because it didn't because it did change, and tertiaries don't. Um, if it was a secondary, it would go to a ketone, which is not acidic. So we're looking at a primary alcohol, and we know that it's C4H9OH. So one, two, three, four. Um, name for the product, I'm looking for a carboxylic acid that would come from an alcohol primary with four carbons. I'm expecting you just to do that. It's obviously sticking your hydrogens. So you get butanoic acid. Um, you could uh, have have a branch off here. Now you could take that one off, make it a branch. So you could have two methyl propanoic acid, but that is just making your life harder. Go for the simple one. Okay, complete the ion electron equation for the oxidation reaction. So C4H9OH going to C4H8O2. So this is a complex ion equation. So we are going to do three things. Okay, you're going to do oxygens with water. You're then going to balance your hydrogens with H+. And then you're going to balance your charge with electrons. That's your three. That's what you have to do. Okay, so start with hydrogens, sorry, oxygens. Uh, we've got one and we've got two on the other side, so I'm going to have to put um, a water in here to, to balance that. Okay, then look at my hydrogens. So I've got 10, 11, 12 on this side, and I've only got eight on this side, so I'm going to have to put four hydrogen ions on that side. And then I need to balance charge. This side has zero. That side's got four plus, so I need to get it to zero. So I'm going to add in four electrons and that's what you've got to do. OK, right. This is all getting a little bit messy because I had to move things over so I could have the table still seen. OK, the student found the following information about the boiling points of some aldehydes. Um, we've got a whole pile. Uh, we've got C5s, C7s, C6s in here. Um, lots of different structures. Right, see if I can make that just a little bit bigger so it's clearer. Hopefully. Okay, right. Name the aldehyde that has a boiling point of 119. So that's this one here. I need to name this aldehyde. So we follow all our standard things for naming. Okay, find the longest chain. Okay, 
okay, number from the functional group, which is going to be the aldehyde, and add any extra groups on that you have, okay? Um, so naming from the right-hand side, we have 2-methyl, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons, 2-methyl, pent, and al. Okay, predict the boiling point in degrees C of the following molecule. Okay, so we've got an eight carbon straight chain aldehyde, no branches. So over here, we've got a five, we've got a six, we've got a seven of that. So we're gonna use that as our, um, as our chain, okay? So I've got 102 goes to 103, sorry, 130 goes to uh, 153. So we're looking for jumps going up the way, okay? Um, so, it is increasing, this one increased by 28, this one increased by 23. So I was, I went for an increase, but less than 23 of an increase, and I said 171. Um, but they were accepting quite a big increase, actually. So they were accepting anywhere between 166 to 181. Okay, using information from the table, describe one way in which the differences in structure affect the boiling point of isomeric aldehydes. So... Our isomerics are uh, C5H10 here. So there's another C5 and there's a C5. Um, so what we have there quite clearly is that as you increase, there's a branch and there's a branch, two branches. So as you increase branching, um, we're getting a decrease in our boiling point. Okay. Um, I think that's... I mean, we could use, I suppose we could use this one. Same thing, though. That's that's just branching. Um, doing the same thing. So that's what you're going for. State what would be observed when aldehyde is gently heated with tolens. It's on your list of things that you need to know for um, oxidising agents. So this is the silver mirror. Ketones contain a carbonyl group. Name the type of intermolecular interaction between ketone molecules. Um, so this is permanent dipole. Two permanent dipole. Not strong enough um, to, well, and, and also doesn't contain hydrogen, so it's not going to be strong enough for a hydrogen bond. Um, but it does have a dipole, so that's that, and that's that question.